Welcome to our webinar scaling up lab automation through throughput through lab automation. My name is Orna Nutra and um, I'm the vice president of marketing at New Tech and I'm very happy to be here with you this afternoon. Um, a few words about New Tech. For the past 20 years, well, we've been working closely with quality assurance and research and development laboratory professionals in many different industries, food, pharma, academia, agriculture, helping them implement automation in their labs. A lot of this automation replaces common, repetitive, tedious practices used in every step of the lab's workflow and with which I'm sure you're very familiar with. From sample preparation, through um, agro pouring, colony counting, liquid handling, and many other additional tasks, such as analysis of water activity, analysis of color, shape, size. We like to keep in close touch with our customers and to hear what they're doing in their labs and where their challenges are. But as we've all experienced in the past 18 months, in-person interactions were very difficult. So we found ourselves pivoting to having virtual conversations. Um, and as labs shut down and reopen again, and unfortunately that's not over yet, um, a common challenge for many has been meeting, you know, a lot of our customers have been saying that they have to meet very high demand, even larger than normal with limited and inconsistent workforce. So it's very hard to hire. It's very difficult to bring in everyone to the lab. People are sick, people are in, people are out. And so the need for increased productivity and efficiency has become even more evident than usual. For some, having lab automation in place has been a real savior. Today, we'd like to share with you some excerpts from these conversations that we've had with customers. And on this note, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Brady Carter, who facilitated many of these conversations. Hi, Brady. Hello. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about your experience having these conversations? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was a good opportunity to uh, to be able to join with uh, some customers uh, during a time of of upheaval in their lives and our lives, everybody's lives. Uh, to kind of find out more about uh, what their experiences were and, and what was happening. We were limited, obviously, in, in being able to travel. And so it, uh, it, it was a great time to be able to utilize technology and, and um, have some interaction with our customers at the same time and to really learn about what they were experiencing during this whole thing. And, and uh, I, I know you've shared with me that people are really happy with that connection. Yeah, I think that I think it was uh, useful for them. I think they were glad uh, that uh, we were trying to continue to make those efforts to con to have those relationships and to that we were concerned about how things were going and and uh, they were happy to have that interaction and happy to have um, some options uh, and solutions that were helping them. So um, we're going to um, listen to a few of these conversations that you've had. You know, for everyone who's joined us today, if you find that you have any questions that you'd like to ask, you're curious, or you know, just questions about the instruments that we're going to see, just put your put your questions in the chat box. Uh, we're going to leave a little bit of time at the end to go over them. So, Brady, who are we going to be listening to first? So, 1st up is um, a testing laboratory um, out of California called uh, Amtech testing laboratories. <clears throat> they do um, microbiology testing primarily on all kinds of different samples, food, water, environmental samples. And, and uh, of course, they had to, to stay um, open during all the COVID issues. Um, uh, considered a necessary uh, service. Um, and so they, they went through this whole process uh, with the challenge of continuing to deliver fast and accurate results. That's really what they emphasize uh, from their, their facility is, is getting results on time, but making sure that they're accurate because they really are um, providing some, some valuable information. So we took the opportunity to talk to Susan Lee. She's the lab manager at, uh, at Amtech Testing Laboratories. So uh, let's take a listen and see what she said. Great. 
motivated you to acquire automation equipment? Um, I believe they kind of always use automated equipment, at least where we could fit it into our workflow. Um, and then obviously as a lab, you know, as we're growing, we're probably going to try to fit more automation into our workflow, um, whether it's more of what we're already using now or if there's any new, you know, automated technology that comes out. Uh, the, the, the next question then is kind of in those same lines. So you had automation and then you uh, wanted to acquire additional. Was there any specific reasons other than what you just said? Um, no, it's pretty similar. Um, where there was a need in operations, we try to fit it in if there was an automated instrument that could, you know, meet that need um, for that gap. So what are the main advantages uh, between using the automation, especially the automation equipment from new tech versus if you had to do things manually? Um, definitely automation provides um, an increase in efficiency as well as, pro as, well as productivity. Um, it also helps with um, accuracy as well as confidence in sample preparation and analysis. Um, we can trust, you know, you know, it's uh, consistent performance every time. So you don't have that technician variability. Um, so it kind of eliminates that concern as well as it helps us uh, multitask while we're doing samples. So if you know the machine's doing one thing, we can work on another thing and that kind of helps with our workflow as um, time saving. And what are those what what are some examples of those other things that you can do? Is it is it other testing or is it dealing with data and doing data analysis? Um, usually it's with um, with what we're doing sample preparation. So as you're doing one sample, you can also work on the next sample as one is going through, you know, the smart diluter or one's going through the masticator. So while that's going, you can multitask and then work on the next sample. And that's just kind of an ease of flow, um, which is really um, time saving as well as efficient. Kind of answered this in uh, the previous question, but is there anything else to add as far as things that you can do that you can do that you might not be able to do if you didn't have automation? Um, it would be one ability to plate multiple dilutions. So I really like that the Eddy Jet allows us to plate multiple multiple dilutions on like one single plate. Um, that's something that would take a lot of time if we had to do one dilution at a time. So I like that um, it has that ability. Um, and then with the you know flash and go colony counter, we can get a colony count in seconds as well as calculation of what we're trying to count. So I really like that about it. Is speed and and turnaround for results one of the things that's very important to your customers and and uh, is that one of the reasons why they come to you? Um, yes, a lot of our customers like to come to us because you know one, we are very like, you know, we meet our turnaround times, and then if um, a part of that is because we use automated equipment. If we didn't have it, we probably wouldn't meet our turnaround times, you know, like our clients like, like that we do. So it's very crucial because, you know, the results that we're getting, these are going to our clients that will be using it for their operations. So, you know, using automation, the fact that our automated equipment can be consistent in how it's performing, that kind of, you know, lets us know that we can be confident in our process and then they can be confident with us because we're confident in our process and, you know, so forth. So it's, it's very crucial and very important in making sure that our clients get, you know, the most accurate results that they should be getting. We want to provide them with the most accurate information and results because that will affect them and how they release their product. So if something went wrong here, we can let them know and they can make the decision, you know, or make the right steps to either release a product or not release a product. And then that it's, you know, we're basically serving the public, you know, it's like food safety and public health and, we should probably keep to that. The, having that automation equipment, kind of like what you're saying, where you could do those colony counts so quickly, um, does it, the, it, it, it goes faster, but does it give you more confidence that you're really getting the true counts when you're using that kind of technology? Um, I believe it does, because I believe the technology does know, you know, what it's doing as well as how it's operating. And we do, you know, we're also visually there to see you know what's going on so it's not as if like we're just completely relying on it but we are sure. there to make sure like that it's you know reading what's corrected it has um what's good is that this technology has you know um preset conditions or you know like modes that we can set it to and then it'll be able to accurately read it every time or 
recognize, you know, certain colonies every time and say this is how many you have of E. coli or total coliforms. So um, Antec is really using automation all across the workflow of, the, of their testing, through sample prepping, through spreading, through counting, and um, and it really yeah, helps them. From what I heard from Susan, meet their deadlines and make sure that the product is safe before it's released for their customers. Yeah, and, and she mentioned a couple of, of names there just for clarification. The the Eddie Jet is a, a spiral plater that uh, does a threefold dilution uh, as part of the inoculation process. And she met, mentioned the Flash and Go, which is a an imaging system that does colony counting. Um, right. and, and obviously very critical to what they do in their automation. But yeah, all across the, the process, I think they're utilizing it and and it really does allow them to stand out among other testing labs because they can get those turnarounds times that they have to get but they mm -hmm. they can assure their their results are good and it seems as though they've been as busy as ever throughout the pandemic yeah and for sure and uh um they had to keep up with with all the demands uh, even if there were interruptions and and automation was critical to that great so who are we going to listen to next um What's been their challenge? So next up is Oklahoma State University. Um, we talked to Teresa Blakely. She's a lab technician at Oklahoma State uh, in the microbiology, molecular genetics uh, in their department teaching lab. So the, the main uh, focus in terms of this use case is for teaching. Um, so she works in a teaching laboratory. They have 400 students per semester that they have to work with and they have to <clears throat> Prepare auger plates uh, for all these students to be able to practice doing inoculations, practice doing um, uh, identification, but those plates have to be made up ahead of time. And so she utilizes um, the automatic sterilization equipment um, to sterilize that auger and then the plate pouring system. And you'll hear her discuss PS20, that's uh, uh, from Petri Swiss, that's a specific type of pouring system that uh, New Tech provides. Um, and, and that's what she's referring to when she when she mentions that and how important it is uh, for the things she is doing. Um, and and so these plates ultimately go to the students and she mentions how automation allows her to do other things um, and even how it it saved her during uh, during uh, the interruptions for COVID. Okay, let's listen to her. What what sort of motivated you? To, to look for uh, trying to implement some automation? Well, when you have so many students and uh, not enough employees or work study, hand pouring plates for, oh my goodness, uh, for these students every semester just becomes very arduous in your, your, your daily focus is pouring plates. It's not focusing on the bacteria that you need to culture or doing anything else it just getting the Proclave and the Petri Swiss 900 <laughs> was amazing. It, it's just cut out so much of time that we had to focus on pouring the plates. It's sure. a life. And, and um, okay, so you know the whole COVID thing is going on. Well, we had worked, we had. I had made plates last December for the spring semester. Our spring semester was cut short uh, because of the COVID. And right. um, we just now opened a box of plates that I had made last December. And there might have been 10 plates out of 500 that were bad. So when it comes to contamination, this machine is, it, it just, helps so much with that and uh, it helps with the waste we have so little waste where when we had to hand pour stuff um, we had oh my gosh our plates might last a semester maybe um, typically they would just be full of mold and all other kinds of fun things that just dropped out of the air right so, so do you think if you had made, uh, if you'd hand poured those plates last last winter, um, 
and and now we're going to try and use them because of the COVID. Do you, what what percentage do you think would still be okay? One <laughs> percent. Okay. Has there been any time since you you acquired the equipment that you've been without it, uh, where where you've had to go back to doing things manually? No. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> what what would that be like if it happened? I mean, what would that what 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 would that do to you? I would cry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we would just have to adjust and kind of go back to the old ways of making the auger, putting it into the autoclave, getting it out, cooling it down, hand pouring it, you know, one plate at a time, and. Um, Gosh, it would just be horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> um, is and, and does it provide some? Uh, I mean, you know, you, obviously you've done you've done them both ways, and you've done the manual. Um, are there any safety related things that this helps with, and um, uh, that that you face when you're trying to do these things manually? Um, yes, whenever you're hand pouring plates you know, you're dealing with number one, autoclaves, which are steam pressure. Um, we've had work study get burned, uh, sticking their arms in the autoclaves and just things happen. Then you talk about hot blast. Um, if you don't have on, you know, the right thickness of gloves when you're hand pouring, um, we've had students uh, break the glass. We've had students get burned. Um, all of that is just taken care of in the propoclave, it cools it down, and then then it, it comes over here to the petri petri swift and pours, and it just I just can't tell you what a lifesaver it is. In terms of, uh, I mean, you had kind of mentioned this earlier, but uh, uh, where you don't have uh, a, a huge uh, resource of of people that work in there. Um, uh, obviously, it saves uh, a lot of labor time. Um, and and I mean, would you be able to uh, to do what you do by yourself uh, if you didn't have this automation? No. What no. what does it let you do that you wouldn't be able to do? I can concentrate more on inoculating the bacteria. Um, you know, we have a lot of trash around here. The work study will help with the trash and getting it autoclaved, keeping things cleaner, keeping everything prepped and ready to go. It, it just alleviates so much time. And, you know, one of my main focuses is the bacteria. And you, you can't hurry any of that. You have to take your time and use any septic techniques. And um, when you're pressed for time, Something's got to give, and with the prosoclase, there's all of that pressure is pretty much off. So uh, we don't want Teresa to cry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. So it seems as though um, for them having the sterilization and the pouring system in place was a real savior throughout the pandemic. Yeah, it, it really allowed them to to save some plates and, and they even got in situations I know where they had to, you know, provide these remotely um, for students that were working uh, online, but they still had to do their labs. And so uh, they really, really relied on it to late as the COVID proceeded. So they were pouring the plates and shipping them off to the students. In which case they had to stay good uh, during that shipping process. Right. So I know our next. Um, um video is uh, also the university the university of kentucky how are they different so university of kentucky is a little bit different in that they um that they are a microbiology testing lab um but they aren't necessarily focused on uh, the teaching like uh, like teresa was at oklahoma state um they're more test focused on the actual testing the the end testing uh where they do um they do challenge studies, uh, even for for people outside of the university, but certainly for uh, they're part of this food systems innovation, and so they're doing research work on food safety and and looking for microorganisms, and so they have to do that type of testing. But they'll also they have a service center set up, and they can bring samples in 
from outside for people, maybe small businesses that are getting started up and they need to have challenge study, shelf life studies done. Um, so really critical testing. And, and again, they had to stay functional during the interruptions and and the, even here, they, they couldn't even come into the lab in a lot of cases, or at least they couldn't have more than one person in the lab. So they had to, they had to be able to work around schedules, a very limited workforce. Um, and they, they're, they're very focused on the inoculation and the counting part, kind of like what we heard from Amtech, whereas uh, um, Therese was very focused on the plate preparation and use, using uh, the, uh, the automation. So here, again, you'll hear Kelsey talk about spiral uh, plating and the Yeti jet, as well as the colony counting systems, um, the sphere or the flash and go. And that's, that's what she's talking about is, is sort of that inoculation and colony counting process. Right. And, um, I think we should also mention that, uh, this is a recording from, um, an IFP webinar that you facilitated. Um, yes, exactly on this topic of COVID-19 interruptions to the workforce. So you're going to see. Um, Kelsey speaking, and you're, you're probably going to see on the screen also a picture of Teresa. She was also invited um, to that webinar as well, right? That's right. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll, let's take a look. Great. So um, how has having that automation and, and those capabilities in your lab, how's that impacted your ability to do research during COVID? So it was really a game changer for us because we were actually able to stay open um, now given in a limited capacity, um, but my, uh, my PI and myself very quickly mobilized our laboratory to be on a rotational um, and, and limited access uh, type schedule for our laboratory. Now, with that being said, you can understand that suddenly going from, um, you know, we do hand pouring methods for a lot of our augers, but we also um, have thankfully the automation for the the spiral plating when we do samples so that was really what saved a huge amount of time for us was actually being able to tr transition all of those and just continue research as if nothing almost had had phased because where we save so much time and in, in media and effort um with the spiral plater as as uh, i'm sure you will explain later on how that kind of works by being able to utilize that uh, instrument in place of doing it by hand and having those trained personnel on hand that unfortunately with COVID, we were very limited on, in our time frame and our access to the laboratory settings. Excellent. Um, so in, in your experience and, and even beyond just necessarily interruptions from, from COVID, what, what are the other main advantages you see of using automation over doing things manually uh, it, when faced with these interruptions, but also just on a on a day by day basis. Mm -hmm. So, I, I and, and Brady also knows this because we discuss this any time that I have to send off our spiral plater for its preventative maintenance. My my heart breaks a little bit um, because I'm I'm without it for about two weeks, and so I try to purposely schedule things so that we can have that two week absence. Um, and then I can have the spiral player back and instantly go back to doing samples. So we utilize this piece of equipment. I mean, it it really just is, is, is a complete blessing. I mean, the amount of time is really what what it comes down to. It's, it saves time not only for me preparing samples, for me physically doing the plates, for me physically reading the plates. It's a huge game changer for that. But it also saves a whole amount of, of money concerning media prep and other things. If, if we were doing a lot of these samples by hand, we are oftentimes doing um, you know, shelf life samples. So as the sample progresses in age of the food product, then we obviously get increased bacteria. And you don't always know kind of what to expect. Some products last a very long time and increase very slowly versus others change very rapidly, even within a short time frame. So to be able to have that kind of automatic dilution that occurs across the spiral plater really helps us to save media in the long run because we're not wasting a whole bunch of plates or maybe even not getting an accurate count on the sample because we missed a dilution along the way. So there's a lot of forgiveness there that happens with this instrument, as well as being able to train students on it who maybe haven't worked out how exactly um, what whatever their counts are for their experiment or maybe have something that changes very dramatically over over different time periods. So 
there's a lot of wiggle room and forgiveness that occurs here that really also helps us in the long run and save a lot of the media and, and a lot of, let's be honest, a lot of tears from several graduate students who have, have done their experimenting on, oh, I didn't get the right dilution. And if they've used the spiral plater, oftentimes we can still get viable counts out of those. Wonderful. Um, so I, I, I kind of guess we know the answer to this, but would you, would you recommend automation to other microbial research laboratories? So, so for myself personally, oh yes. <laughs> Uh, so, Brady, our last interview is going to be a bit different, right? Uh, yeah. So, um, this last 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 interview is with uh, a, a company called Modern Canna Laboratories, um, and they are an ISO seventeen zero two five accredited cannabis laboratory. Um, they're one of the first ones that uh, was certified in in the state of Florida uh, for testing cannabis, part of a, a larger um, contract laboratory. Um, and so they, they have to provide a, a very wide range of tests for, for cannabis, um, including water activity and, and water activity is, is a, a very critical part of, of um, cannabis regulations in most states. Uh, and so it's becoming more and more critical uh, as um, a testing or a test that's required in the cannabis industry. And so we talked to um, Casey Slezak, she's the project manager at Modern Canna. A little bit about her experience in working with water activity equipment that New Tech provides, and how um, there was a need for them to upscale again um, in the amount of testing that they could do because of demand, and how that was possible um, utilizing the the Lab Master Lab Master Neo water activity instrument that's uh, made by uh, Novacina and distributed by New Tech. Modern Canna is an ISO 17025 accredited cannabis testing laboratory. Um, and we were the first lab, um, Florida lab, to be uh, involved in the rule development for the cannabis industry in Florida. And we are also the first Florida laboratory to test medical marijuana. Do you know when uh, when you guys started measuring water activity and was it because regulations required it? Yeah, so we started testing in 2018 um, for water activity. This was before um, it was a requirement, but because we knew that it was eventually going to be a requirement, um, we decided to implement it in the lab, get it, you know, so that we were used to that analysis. Um, analysis. We knew um, what to expect, how to run it and all that. What, what kind of an impact has it had on the business? Was it a pretty um, easy transition into starting to test water activity and and are you seeing now where um, even the client specifically I, uh, want water activity in addition to it being a regulation? So it definitely um, is tested for every single final product because it's a regulation um, in testing water activity. You know, we've been able to not only satisfy state requirements, but it also allows us to comply with our third party um, accreditors so um, or accrediting entities. It's often something that um, will be added later because it can um, indicate other things about a sample. So for example, um, something that has an abnormally high water activity will also often tend to have a mo high moisture content. And if it's a high moisture content for that product, then you know you could have problems such as microbial growth. So it's definitely an important analysis. Okay. What's uh, been your experience with uh, testing the water activity and how does it compare to other tests that you guys have to run? It's definitely um, one of the simplest analysis analyses to run for us, you know, um, which is great. Um, and again, because it has implications on other results, it's a great way for us, say, if we're able to run water activity on a sample that we got the day of, but we know that our other analyses, which take um, a lot longer, are not going to give us results yet. We can kind of know or make assumptions about what the results might look like, which is great. Excellent. Thank you.
Mm -hmm. um, so I know uh, you started out with maybe one water activity instrument, and since then you've added several different, uh, or not different, but several additional water activity <laughs> instruments. What prompted that? Was it a, an increase in business just because of of uh, the market in Florida, or were you struggling to be able to get the ones done that you needed to, or a combination of that? Um, I mean, the cannabis industry in Florida is growing exponentially, and we are seeing that with the amount of samples we get. So, um, you know, we had one or two running at a time, and now we have multiple instruments running every single day. We There's never a day where we're not running water activity, um, and there's never a day where we're only running one instrument of water activity. New Tech is a great partner, I will say. Um, we believe in building great relationships with our um, vendors, and that all starts with, you know, customer service. and. Um, New Tech definitely provides great customer service for us, so that's awesome. Plus, you know, the water activity meters are a great price, so we love that. <laughs> well, like I said, you guys are great to work with, so we appreciate you. That, that's always great to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so, um, that was our Water last interview. Is... Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, if we have any questions from uh, our audience here today, then uh, by all means, put them in the chat. We're happy to, to spend a few moments answering some of your questions. And, um, yeah. Orna, I was just going to say one, one thing I had, had noticed uh, in both Teresa and in, in uh, Kel Kelsey's that I hadn't uh, really focused on before. I've heard those lots of times. But it was real interesting when uh, Teresa was talking specifically about safety um, and that they had actually had situations, dangerous situations happen in the laboratory where glass was breaking and, and there were burns that had been eliminated by automation equipment. And, and Kelsey mentioned, uh, you know, making mistakes and results and, and all of a sudden you're, you're, you're on the brink of a complete disaster for a graduate student and then saved by the fact that there was automation, there was a three, threefold dilution in the spiral plating. And um, that just really stood out this time listening that it hadn't stood out before. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we also hear a lot about uh, carpal tunnel syndrome from pouring agar and, you know, different other issues that uh, that surface when you're doing, you know, something repetitively. Um, yeah, um, Brittany, we, we have a few questions here. I think um, one of the people, uh, um, listeners are is asking about the different automation machinery that were discussed. Maybe we can go back to the initial workflow uh, slide and just point them out. <clears throat> sure. So, um, so there were uh, we were talking about the prioclaves um, sterilization. So that's the, some examples of the sterilization equipment that we include. So that's, that's for right. auger preparation um, and and sterilization sterilization of auger. What's nice is that these systems can actually connect directly to the pouring systems. And so that's uh, what you see pictured here. This is a, 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 a carousel based <coughs> PS 400 um, and then the PS 900 and the, the 400 900 just basically means the number of plates that can be poured uh, in an hour. Um, and, and this and so, is just uh, part of the product line, right? Uh, Teresa actually, I believe, uses the PS 20, which is the smaller version. Right, so that you can see up here, there's 2,200. So there are small, there are different versions depending on how many plates uh, you have to work with, and our our uh, in our engineers um, are able to to work with customers about what is the best solution for them um, based on what their automation needs are. Um, but that that's kind of the sample prep side. There are some other things we didn't talk about. The XY for tube filling is great as well, automated for pipetting. Um, we also have a liquid handling system the, the, from Flow Robotics that can automate all liquid handling processes. And then on the, the sample handling side, um, you start with diluters. Nobody mentioned the diluters, but we do offer those as well as mixers. And then Actually, here's the Susan, energy chip. Susan mentioned them already. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. That's right. They do have those and do utilize them. Um, and uh, then we have the Eddy Jet. The spiral plater that was mentioned multiple times. 
Um, we have in incubation uh, offerings as well for uh, setting the inoculations in up until you need to do colony counting. And then this is the, the sphere system uses imaging to do colony counting. So that's, that was all the instruments that were talked about. Plus the water activity um, was the last one from modern Canada. Those uh, several different sizes, price ranges available for water activity testing. Um, uh, Kelsey or uh, Casey uh, was mentioning the the Neo, the LabMaster Neo, which is this one, top of the line instrument for water activity, best one in the world uh, for measuring water activity. Right. Um, can you just say a few words about what's unique about the spiral crater, Freddie, as opposed to a regular crater, the spiral system, and yeah, and so. So the spiral plater, and this is a, a published uh, methodology. Um, so it's a, an accepted methodology for doing inoculations. What's nice about this is that it creates a threefold dilution as part of the process. So it eliminates essentially three test tubes or three dilution processes that would normally have to be done as you're trying to get to a dilution level where you can actually do some effective colony counting. And so it, it actually does that right on the plate itself. It, it spins it. And as it spins from the interior out, it's doing the dilution as it goes. So it's it's actually applying that threefold dilution. Um, and then you can even with the equipment, the sphere, uh, if it knows that that you've applied a uh, spiral plating, it can actually account for those dilutions uh, when it does the colony counting. So it's a uh, it not only is it an automated, but it actually eliminates uh, a lot of the dilutions that you might normally have to do when you're trying to find out. Uh, or find the right level so that she can actually do colony county. Right. Um, and of course, it, 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 so it saves the time and it saves the plates as well. Yep. Um, For sure. All yeah. of these uh, people are asking about uh, videos and pictures of the instruments. Uh, everything is on our website. If you visit our website at newtechgroup.com, you can find all of these products and uh, and the videos as well about um, how they um, they can be how they function how they how they're used and even some of these interviews are on the website and um, and also reach out to us you know feel free to just reach out for more information uh, we're happy to hear what you're doing you know what your challenges are and to help you find the solution that's the right one for your lab so and don't hesitate um, uh, we also have, you know, a lot of times people ask about return on investment. Like, how long does it take before you recover the cost? And and I think it, that answer will will be different for you know different levels of automation and what instrument you're looking at exactly. But we're we're also you know really happy to work that through with your lab, right? Because it's it's going to change. How many people are you using right now? You know. How, how much time you're going to save by using what kind of instrument and and how long before you come recover that cost. So um, feel free to reach out to us. Um, I also want to thank our our guests, right? Um, Susan, Teresa, Kelsey, Casey, and um, and this is something that we're continuously doing. We we love to speak. We'd love to speak with you. Anyone who's on here. Um, sometimes I know there are limitations with sharing whatever your stories are with other people, which is fine. I mean, we are mostly concerned about, you know, our, our connection to, to what you're doing and what your needs are. And, uh, um, we look forward to speaking with you before you leave us. Um, we're going to post a survey about, um, about this webinar today, and uh, we're very happy. You know, we're very thankful if you take just a few moments to give us some feedback. If you like what you heard today, if there's anything else you'd like to hear about, please let us know. And thank you for joining us. Thank you, Brady. My pleasure. All of this. Enjoy uh, the rest of your afternoon.